creators of visual programming tools for software development, is pleased to provide major funding for the Computer Chronicles, the story of this continuing evolution. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schaffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, we've done a lot of shows about computer hardware and software, but of course it takes people to design and build these things, and that's the subject of our program today, the people in the computer business, and I guess the Silicon Valley is in fact as famous for its young entrepreneurs as it is for its products. And speaking of young entrepreneurs, you're one of them having found a digital research about nine or ten years ago. Gary, how has the people side of this business changed during that period? Well, I know I've, I've traded in my cowboy boots and blue jeans for a three-piece suit here, so some, some changes have gone on. I think um, the biggest change I've seen has been uh, in, uh, say, the, the impact of just having no products that are competitive at all to an, uh, a market now where everybody's in there, including IBM, that have multi-million dollar budgets, and you've got to figure out how to work around uh, big, big giants like that. Uh, it's become much more professional, and uh, the stakes are higher, and it's been a lot more fun, I think. Okay, we're going to meet some of the superstars of the computer field. We'll meet a man who's called the father of the Silicon Valley. We'll meet a man who revolutionized the computer business by coming out with the first low-cost portable. And we'll meet a woman who didn't know a computer from a commuter, but she's now the CEO of a major computer company. First, let's take a look at some of the other people who played a key role in the evolution of the computer business. Those of us involved with micros back in 1974-75 we had not already designed all of the interface cards and the peripherals and the software that goes into the mini computers of the day or the larger systems. And to us, it was so exciting because it was like we thought we were doing the things for the first time they'd ever been done. And it was all it was was it was the first time they'd ever been done that cheap using a lot of the LSI technology. And so there was a lot of just the excitement everywhere we went. It was like putting out a little table and showing off a little card that would play music on a computer or make color was uh, the most exciting thing in the world. and We thought we were way ahead of the rest of the world. What I was doing around that time was not even thinking about what, it, what are the right steps to take to have a very large successful company or a large successful product. It was just, I, I had been working my whole life to build a certain type of computer for myself. And I just built the best one that was doable in that day with the particular components available, et cetera. And um, in that sense, it wasn't sort of like, it wasn't like an intelligence. That, that can lead you towards the right path. It was just being very free. I, was a, I had the freedom because I was only doing it for myself. It was not a company project where a manager defined what, you know, what had to be done. So I was lucky to be able to do what I did. Everywhere I go now, I go to, I go to business meetings and presentations, and they're all sitting there in three-piece suits. It's a large business. There's a lot of dollars involved. The people who have come out of school trained to run and manage business is the key element today, and that's where most of the creativity is going. There's very few technical technically creative products in the microcomputer world. Is a garage operation still feasible in the small computer industry today or is that stage over? Well that stage is pretty much becoming over for hardware. It used to be people could quickly manufacture some simple little PC boards on a small budget, get a, an ad in a little hobbyist magazine and start selling a bunch of them. And So very small entrepreneurships, thousands of them sprung up, many of them centered around Apple. That was probably the, the biggest direction to go. Uh, now it's pretty much that's possible for software groups to come up with a good software project and there are avenues to find companies that will market it for you or turn it into a product if you've got something good going. It, you know, perhaps once a decade, a very large market comes from zero up to billions of dollars within a few years. It's very rare that it, there's such a dramatic explosion out of nowhere of a new market. It may happen again in microelectronics and computers before too long. Maybe every 10 years, a new group of people come out, and they haven't been along with the Apple and the thousands of peripherals and the thousands of softwares, and they think every time they're doing it, they're doing it for the first time ever. They're going to get a, a couple of their own hobby computer magazines that are in their group. They don't come to our group. They're going to start talking and having little trade shows and showing each other projects, and they'll start new businesses of their own, and I think that's probably about to happen. It's like you go to a trade show, and they pull up in their mobile home, and it's a little garage shop. You know, they pull it out the back, and they show it off, and you want to buy a couple? And, uh, you know, these may be very large companies in a few years. But right now, we all shun them on them. We just say, oh, you know, there's just a couple of guys who drove out of their home with it. That's what they said about us. Yeah. I, I can, you can understand it. When you're looking down at someone else, you can understand how you were perceived back in those days. And then you also realize they were right. It's just a quirk of faith that, that they were wrong. 